Welcome in to our post-game show of the Noon Window and College Football here today. Thank you so much for joining us. And, of course, we're going to preview uh, and talk about Tennessee and Georgia that highlights the 3.30 Eastern time window. Uh, I have in front of me, they're in commercial break right now with uh, Texas A&M and Florida. Last I checked at 31 all. We just finished up a watch party on Patreon. Had a great time with a handful of us, about 10 or 12 on the line most of the time uh, over the last three hours, checking out uh, all the games and the three that I was really locked into uh, as best I could be. Texas, Oklahoma, of course, Red River shootout. That always has to be uh, the primary objective on a October afternoon. But of course, Texas now faltering, having to punt right now down by 14. So that's about to leave my screen because uh, Virginia Tech's putting up a fight against the North Carolina. Last I saw that score was 42-37, I believe, uh, after the Hokies had gotten down 35-14 in that game. But halftime, battling back, I've not been able to track what's happened to the Tar Heels, who were prolific on offense, uh, especially the connection of Sam Howe and Diame Brown. But uh, I will certainly check out your comments right here on YouTube. Again, we were on Patreon for our watch party at noon Eastern time. Please join us on Patreon, uh, the voice of college football with my uh, top 25 that actually makes sense, the predictions, and, of course, our watch parties and other exclusive live streams. I'll check out your comments here. The phone lines are open if you want to call. My timing possibly a bit off, but uh, most of you know that have followed me during the previous college football seasons that uh, this has been the standard mode of operation, has been – Jump on here after the noon games to prep the 3.30 games. Jump on after the 3.30 games to set us up for the primetime games. And then after the primetime games, we get you set with uh, Pac-12 after dark out west. But, of course, we're waiting for the Big Ten and the Pac-12 to finally start their college football season. So it's been a great noon Eastern time window of games. I've enjoyed it, uh, especially this Florida-Texas A&M game, where early in the game it appeared as though while the Aggies were game, that uh, Florida's offense would just be too much for them. But uh, the Aggies have kept up on defense uh, here. And, man, do I have game notes all over the place. But, again, game notes, game notes, game notes. With the play being what it is right now, we just got to keep up with what's going on in the moment which uh, means eight and a half minutes left in the game at Kyle Field with AM and Florida tied at 31. Trask has the football. He's given it off on the left side. They're inside the AM 40-yard line. And so that's going to bring up a second down. Let's get to your comments and see what you guys have going on right now. Getting evens on the line. First here, I want to start by saying Florida is way overrated. That defense is no close to being a top 10 defense. They need to drop Florida regardless if they win or lose a top 15 team, maybe. Okay, okay, okay. Getting even, we'll get to that in just a second. We'll track the games, but I, I don't agree. I agree with your assessment of the defense. I don't agree with your assessment of the ranking. Uh, so we've got Oklahoma trying to run out the clock. They just had a great run on first down. Uh, when I say run out the clock, there's not 50 seconds left in the game. There's 11 minutes, but it's a two-score game. They do have possession of the football. Texas is going to need two possessions, obviously, to tie. Florida comes up with a big first down, completion across the middle to, I believe, Kadarius Tony. Yes, uh, he catches it first and 10. Florida inside the 25. So they're in the red zone. Oklahoma, big tackle for loss, although Pledger. He actually threw off like three would-be tacklers in the backfield to make his way for a first down. So that's a big first down for the Sooners. And now again, the Gators uh, just completed another ball for a first and goal play as Kadarius Toney uh, on the receiving end once more. And uh, the Gators are down to the one. Under seven minutes, Trask is going to push it across. Possibly, no, it looks like he stopped right at the half-yard line. Oklahoma up 14, got a fresh set of downs, and they're going to keep it rolling with the uh, first down run for another first down by Major. So between Pledger and Major, they've uh, actually been able to establish a ground game 
uh, have the Sooners today, something that they haven't done the entire season, uh, averaging 3.6 yards per carry on the ground. All right. Cowboys, Steve-O, booyah. Navy, Tom, it's great to see you today. Yeah, good to see you, Tom. Always good to see you. Cheryl, good to see you as well. Phil, let's go, Jimbo, beat the Gators. Jimbo 0-7, of course, against top five teams. You know what? Get the mic disconnected anyway. Here we go. So I was wondering, I wanted to use the mic, but if we were going to get calls, then I wasn't going to use the mic. Mark Rogers, TV, the voice of college football. Who's on the line? Yeah, that Florida defense is a hot mess, Mark. Yeah, they are. Terrible. They are, but uh, yeah, well, I, 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 they're up 38-31. So we, we saw LSU play similar defense most of last year. I agree. But I think like Florida lost some talent off that defense. Oh, they uh, lost a ton of talent. Like Elyman and the best corner and some other you know, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. players, you know. Yeah, they, they, they lost most of their productivity. They, they got back most of the secondary, but the front seven was ravaged. Oklahoma's running out the clock on the ground. Still nine minutes left, yeah, but they're just running at will. I'm telling you, Mark, Herman's on borrowed time. Could be. I just don't think it's going to happen this year. I might be wrong. I, I would give him one more season myself, unless this can, turns into a complete disaster. Uh, and I'm impressed with Spencer Rattler. I know he made some mistakes in the first half, but most of that was pressure. Uh, Texas's worst issue in all of this is pass protection. Their pass protection is awful. That's well, been their biggest problem today. The tailback? Pardon me? Are they getting anything out of the tailback? Because I haven't really been that impressed with the running backs today. Uh, I don't know that they've got anywhere to run. I think the offensive line is atrocious, but especially in pass protection. Ellinger, most of the time, has not had any kind of protection. Uh, what's yeah, I, mean, I, 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 I thought they would have looked better offensively than this. Yeah, I'm giving, uh, giving uh, Texas one more go here if they can get a stop here. Otherwise, we got to check out uh, North Carolina, Virginia Tech. Texas gets a stop. Forced a punt here. And uh, Texas Tech got like 20 players or something? Uh, it was 15 players. Now, I don't know the significance of those players. I just saw the, the, the number. Uh, but uh, now Kellen Mond and Texas A&M have the ball back with six minutes left. And Mond's been phenomenal today. Is it me or has Grantham been all over the place in the SEC? It seems like he's coached defense at every team. In the oh, SEC. Grantham. Well, he was at Louisville, yeah, too. Okay. He was at Louisville. He was at Georgia, Florida, of course. Uh, Todd Grantham, uh, he, he was with somebody in the Western Division, Mississippi State, I believe. I believe that's a connection. Mullen had Grantham at Mississippi State, brought him to Florida. Okay, I got it. Yeah, so he's been to three, yeah. at least three SEC schools in Louisville. See, once you start to make the rounds as a coach and you start to, you know, three, four different, I mean, it, doesn't that say so? I don't know. I think that says something. I well, know. I think coordinators are all over the coach. place anyway. Most coordinators, the Brent Venables of the world are rare. That's true. That's true. Yeah, you don't put, that's why Davos holds on to him. Yeah, absolutely. Give him a lot of dough. Absolutely. So it looks like AM's moving the ball. They got the ball to the tight end. They've got two really good tight ends. Mom looks good. He does today. <laughs> yeah. That guy gets more criticism okay. than I think any quarterback in the oh, country. Look at that. What's that, David? Uh, I think I got you up uh, in behind. He just threw a dime for a touchdown. Okay, I'm going to see it here from about 51 yards, apparently. Here we go. Yeah, I've got the, this game on the uh, the watch feed. There it is. Bam. Uh, oh, jeez. There was a possibility of it being a tad late, but uh, he snuck it in there. Yeah, there was the tight end. They caught the ball in the previous play, Chapman. That's the backup tight end, Caleb Chapman. That's good, Caleb uh, 
But uh, yeah, we got the good Kellen Mond today, which is nice as a viewer. 38 all, four minutes left. This is this is good. Don't like to see that the, uh, the tight end's down in the end zone. He's hurt. And uh, yeah, I need another screen here, basically, because uh, I really want to see what's going on with North Carolina and Virginia Tech. So you need, right now, you need 41-38. I need 45-38. Gotcha. So for, for my wallet and my purposes here. Sure. Right well, I, I would say, David, that uh, normally you'd be in bad shape because most teams would play for the field goal, but this Florida offense, the way they deliver the big plays, that Florida defensive back, he was there. Is Trask an early season Heisman's favorite? He's got to be up there. Heck yeah. He's the guy right now. He's okay. the guy. I mean, if you, were, if you were doing a list, he'd probably have to be at the top of the list. Yeah, I used to I do Heisman right. lists all the time, and I guess I should get back. Now that i got to make money off this thing, my life depends on it, uh, I better start doing what the people want. And people love Heisman lists. i got to remember to well, do that usually, this week. Usually they never work out because everybody's preseason Heisman. You know what they say, the last few years, the Heisman Trophy winners kind of come out of nowhere the last couple of years. Yep. Yeah, they have. Yes, they have. Really going back, most of them since Johnny Manziel. Johnny Manziel was on no one's radar in 2012. Jameis nope. was a, a freshman, or he was a redshirt freshman. Right. All right, well, Texas. Mariota won at 14, you know. Yeah. Derrick Henry, Deshaun yeah, Watson, no. no big surprise. Well, Deshaun Watson did. I keep thinking Deshaun Watson won a Heisman because I think he should have won a Heisman. Anyway, um, yeah, Watson was my guy in 17, and I thought Christian McCaffrey should have been uh, the, the vote over Derrick Henry myself. Those were the two I was upset about. Well, you know what? Zeke killed his chances of 15 against Michigan State. You sure. Know, I was hoping for Zeke that year. No, I was a Christian McCaffrey guy. I believe that he should have been awarded the Heisman. Yeah, I could see that. He had a great year. Was that West Coast bias there, Mark? Yeah, the, the bias uh, going to everywhere but the West Coast. Right. Come on, Trask. Oh, the Texas A&M can't stop him. Man, Texas is a long road back here. There's their own 15-yard line. All right. I've got to kill Texas. You're done. You're not scoring yeah, quick enough. Bad field position. You're only picking up like five yards of play. i got to get North Carolina up here. I'm watching the end of this Texas uh, or this Texas A and M Florida game. Yeah, that's the game I'm watching as well. All right, who else is in the uh, the live chat here? Hey, Mark, I'm gonna hit you back later. Are you gonna run the live stream after the uh, Clemson Miami game? Ah, uh, yes, I believe that's what we're gonna do. And depending on what my Florida State guys decide to do, it might be over on the on the Miami channel because I could be uh, handing this over to them. Yeah. Uh, okay. All so right, we're David. Find out if the U is back, Mark. Appreciate that, David. All right. Take All right. Th thanks. Bye bye. Uh -huh. All right. Uh, unfortunately, North Carolina has tacked down a touchdown to make this less interesting at 49-37. All right. Texas is terrible. Herman might be gone. That's what people are telling me. I don't think so, but I've been wrong before. Uh, Clemson Savage, quite the uh, position change that you've been able to come up with there. That's pretty amazing. The new AD at Texas. People, let me know if Texas scores to make this interesting. Otherwise, we're going with what we've got. Oh, AM's made a play here with 340 left in the game. What happened here? Uh-oh. 
What do we got? What do we got? Did we get a pick? Did we get a fumble? Leal made a play for Texas A&M. Okay, North Carolina has just salted this thing away. They've scored 56 points now. Okay. Michael Carter, 62-yard run. How many yards does he have today? All right. Uh, all right, what, what happened here? Oh, looks like we had a little fumble action. Yes, we did. Uh, Johnson and Leal combine on that. Uh, notes. Notes time. I go back and forth on whether I should do live streams on Saturday or what I used to do is just watch all the games and then I'd uh, take all the notes and I'd cut instant analysis videos. Ryan, good to see you, man. DF Sports. So we're, we're in uh, an interesting uh, territory here. Just in one game, 38 all, Texas A&M, Florida, although Mizzou still giving LSU a game. But I can't, uh, I can't get that one. So, all right, again, we've got another game that's done. <laughs> got another game that's done. Unfortunately, North Carolina has put that thing away. Okay, let's go back to Texas. Chris Ash isn't good enough. Yeah, neither was Todd Orlando, apparently, although Texas had a better defense then. All right, the issues with Texas football on this day, number one, mistakes. I know that the focus is going to be on all the fumbles and the interceptions for Oklahoma. Very true. That kept Texas in the game when they were when they were being outplayed. But they're still at their own 20-yard line. Um, but Texas's pass protection has been non-existent. Sam Ellinger has been under siege the whole game. That's number one issue in my book in this game. Number two would be the lack of discipline. They've made all sorts of penalties at the wrong times. A touchdown was turned into a missed field goal, was turned into a field goal that they couldn't even attempt because they got moved back so far. So basically Texas could have kicked a field goal at one point but had to go for a punt, and they've got a good field goal kicker in Dicker kicker and dicker, but they got pushed out of field goal range because of a false start. Ellinger almost converted to third and 16 with his legs, brought it to fourth and inches. The play stood, but then they had a personal foul on the dead ball that pushed him back from a fourth and inches to fourth and 15 that negated a touchdown situation at the goal line they had to kick a field goal. So Texas issues uh, in regards to discipline and also the offensive line and pass protection in particular has been beyond awful. Mark Rogers, TV, the voice of college football, who's on the line? Uh, yeah, Chris, Chris Ash isn't good enough. Uh, so you're saying that the Texas defense, I don't know who really doesn't give up points to Oklahoma, though. Everybody does. Uh, I mean, I I see more offensive issues in this game. I do too. Sam Ellinger is the most overrated quarterback in college. No, it's not Ellinger's fault. Oh. I don't see any I issues with Ellinger. Tom Brady couldn't throw yeah. on his bat. Like he is being crushed. Most of these plays, most of these plays that are not <laughs> successful for Texas, Ellinger doesn't have a prayer. They just gave him good protection on that play, first down. And he got a first down. But, uh, I'm talking about the unsuccessful but, plays. The unsuccessful plays are typically not his fault. Now, I'm not going to sell him as a great quarterback, but he's one of the 10 or 12 best quarterbacks in the country. That's fair enough. Because some of you have in high been talk, I was just thinking, no. Yeah, he's not great. No. Yeah. I'm, I'm with you on that. But I think he's good. Okay. He's a good college quarterback. I don't think he's going to be in the NFL. Like, he might play for somebody in the NFL. And right on cue to back me up there, he's throwing a pick in the end zone. So this game's over. All right. Oh, he just threw a pick. Yeah, just threw 
he uh, just didn't Here it is. he didn't lay it out it far is. enough. Okay. He needed to throw the ball okay. to the back pylon. It was one of those deals where he's got a wide receiver yeah. headed for the you know down the left sideline. He's got to throw it high and over his head, and he left it short. Yeah. Well, the good, the good news is that um, I'm going to make some money off this game. Okay. <laughs> That's the good news. Um, here's the bad news. The real thing that you're not bringing up is Texas, the special teams. You're kind of going up a little bit, but uh, I said after the uh, Texas Tech game, their special teams is going to come back and bite them in the ass. And uh, it, it did today. That, that block punt, that was six points right there. A missed field goal. So that's what I think really cost them more than anything. I haven't been able to bring up much of anything, McDee Sports. I've been uh, basically calling play by play since I got on here. I didn't expect these games to still have like ten minutes left in the game when I got on here. I, I've been noticing that some of these games have been longer this year. I think it's because of the half time. Um, yes. I think the half times are longer. Missouri LSU. I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to change this game, and I'm going to have to throw it on Missouri LSU. Uh, North Carolina is making me money, which is great, um, but. Uh, one thing I want to bring up to oh, you, Mark, oh, is... Um, you know what we got here? We got a game winner from Texas A&M. They just hit the game winner with two seconds left. Game over. At the gun. A&M wins 41-38. Now, a lot of people are going to be surprised by that. A lot of people are going to be surprised by that. I am not one of them. The the, the roster talent is very comparable. I did not watch a single snap of this game, so oh, I'm going to have to watch it probably good. right there Tuesday. Yeah, Jimbo so fired up right now. Jimbo, oh my! Yeah, there you go. You can't pile on Jimbo this yeah. week. The single short win for him. That's probably the best win he's had. Texas oh, A&M. yes, absolutely. It's the best win. One and seven now. Uh, first top five win at home since two thousand two against number one Oklahoma. Yeah. Two thousand. Wait a minute. Whoa. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh, 2002. I was thinking 2012 with Johnny Manziel. I was like, they played Oklahoma in the Cotton Bowl that year. Okay, 02. First time they've beaten a top five team since 02. Okay. Yeah, that's a big win for them. Uh, and I agree with the talk about Todd Grantham. I mean, I don't know what's going on with Florida's defense. Yeah, that's awful. Texas A&M's offense just came off a game against Alabama where they basically had two drives and that's all they could put together, two short drives. And otherwise they were completely helpless in that game. And now they're tearing up Florida's defense today. There was a drive, McDee, the first drive of the second half. So Florida's up 28-17 at half. Or Yeah, Florida's up 28-17 at half. A&M gets the ball. They threw one pass and they went on like an 11 play drive and they just slammed it off tackle every play and just like at eight and 10 yards a clip to go like 85 yards for a touchdown. Yeah. I mean, and I didn't, I, I mean, I'll be honest. I, I personally thought a and M as I told you last week, what exactly what I thought of them. Uh, this changes my mind about them. They might not be that bad. Now, Grant, I still think they have another loss or two coming. Yeah. Especially in the SEC West, I mean they'll probably split between LSU and Auburn, and uh, but and speaking about LSU, they're they're losing to Mizzou, so I know. maybe they will be LSU. But um, overall, just two other notes before I let you go. Uh, NC State, uh, I'm wrong about them this year. Dave Dorn is actually doing a good job this year, surprisingly. He is, and and uh. And, the, and with Virginia Tech, uh, this head coach, uh, God, I, I just for that, that's his name. His name escaped me for a second. Um, all he does is tread water, and he needs to go. Have a good day, Mark. Thanks, McD. Have a good one. Mark Rogers, TV, the voice of college football. Who's on the line? Hey, Mark, it's George. We lost. I know, George. I just watched it here. Sorry about that. That's isn't a tough it great, one. It, isn't it great to be a Florida Gator? 
I'm not despondent. It doesn't bother me. I think it's all going according to the master plan. The defense will be fine. We can still easily make it to the SEC title game. If easily. we win that game, we're at the playoffs. Nobody, nobody, it, it, that didn't hurt us. That loss didn't hurt us. It's a good lesson for the team. Just because you think you can score 45, you better fucking get your stuff together. I think what I'm going to do, what this reminds me of, George, you saying that, is I got to go back to my Florida predictions video and go to all those oh, people. Yeah. That, you always got to get that game in there. You did. You I got I, it in there. I got to go where all those people were telling me I was an idiot for picking Texas A&M to beat Florida. Got to go respond hey, to all those people. At least when you do that to my team, I don't go on the internet and say, never watch Mark Rogers again. He hates Miami. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Thank you, you, George. Miami Thank was you. On you. I was like, what's wrong with you guys after five years of videos and support? Oh, my goodness. You're a hater. All I do a live stream I for know. him about every other day. Man. And I'm a hater. You know, I got I to gotta pick somebody. When you pick the games, George, I think this is how it works. You're actually picking one team to win and one team to lose. So you, you got to pick somebody to lose. So you can't hate like half the teams in the country. Right. Kind of tough to do. No, I, you eventually the hate with everyone. Miami is pick, them, pick Miami to win every game every season from now on. Yeah, I guess that's what I'm going to do for business. But actually, it helps <laughs> business when I get them fired up. That's what I, I like. Know. Deep down inside, I know that. Yeah, it's better to have your name mentioned in any context. It yeah. It increases your membership. Some people go, who's Mark Rogers? And then they start watching you. <laughs> Well, George, I'm sorry about your team, but you always take it like a man. You take it well. You know, it's just fun. It's just it college hasn't football. Even hurt my day. Look, but potentially, I could see Georgia lose today. Then we beat Georgia. No, we, no loss, no harm, no foul. You know, and and I'm happy for a and I, I never even liked Fisher, but I I have a little bit of empathy. That takes the pressure off his butt for a little while. Yeah. Oh, sure it does. Yeah, everything's fine. Yeah. Cool. Everything's fine. Nice. All I care, all I care about is Georgia, and A and M is a good team. So they're they are a talented team. And that was a good that was a good pick. I'm gonna. I paid for your Patreon five dollars a month. I joined. I up. appreciate that, George. To Thank you so much. I appreciate I gotta, that, George. Yeah, but, but uh, I'm going to go check out your picks, start seeing how you're doing. Then I'll figure out how well, to bet on the games. Whoa, 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 whoa. Don't be betting on my, you know, just, I, I just, uh, I just warn you, George, I don't claim myself to be a handicapper or an odds maker, but I do a pretty good job picking the games, but I'm no, I'm no pro. You can go out there and pay somebody. Um, it's going to cost a little bit more than five bucks. Hey, but, look, uh, that's, back, that's actually true, and I never bet unless it's gut instinct, and I didn't even have that on a Florida game today. I wouldn't have bet the Florida game today because I, I couldn't cover the point spread in my heart. You know? yeah. Yep. All right, Mark, I love you. Yeah, All right, George. To talk to you. We always appreciate it, man. Great to hear from you. Later. Our man George on the line. Yeah, don't, don't put your money on – if you're going to put your money on my picks, you know what? Actually, you will win money. It's been proven over time. It's been proven over years and years and years and years. Picking games since 1982. But just don't hold me to it. Just don't hold me to it. But, yeah, uh, we're not off to a great start today because against my gut. See, I should have went gut on Oklahoma. But I thought, man, everybody's saying, why is Texas not the favorite? Texas is going to uh, – don't listen to people. Listen to yourself. And, uh, of course, I didn't know Virginia Tech was going to lose 15 players. And they were only down five pretty late in the game. So I thought we had something going there. All right, last chance for uh, Texas here. They need two drives, two touchdowns. Third and five, so Ellinger gets that. This boy's tough. He's a gamer. Say what you will about his skill, his talent, that he's not the most precision passer. Uh, Tom Herman had a decision to make years ago between Shane Bouchelle and Sam Ellinger. Bouchelle obviously transferred because he went the Ellinger route. 
And not to say Shane Bouchel is not a leader, doesn't inspire people, isn't tough, any of those things. But it's just obvious with Ellinger. Ellinger is Tim Tebow. And to watch him throw the ball, I don't know that he's not necessarily just as good a thrower as Tim Tebow. He just didn't play with a great team around him like Tebow did. But he's basically Tim Tebow. He's a left-handed Tim Tebow. Or what did I say? Did I just call him a left-handed Tim Tebow? Tebow's, of course, the lefty. Oh, boy. They still have time. There's all sorts of games that uh, are two score games with three and a half minutes left. In this day and age, we see it every week that get turned around. McD, I did go Notre Dame minus the 21 as well. Yes, Bo. Deshaun Watson, check out the check out the comparison of games between he and uh, was Lamar Jackson 2016. Yeah. Lamar Jackson rang up a bunch of numbers against bad teams, and then down the stretch he played Houston and Louisville and put up two awful games. And then I know it didn't count toward the Heisman, but in the bowl game against LSU, nine points and not a whole lot of yards rushing, like 15. Deshaun Watson should have been the Heisman winner. He did throw some picks that year. Okay, Texas scores. Uh, now, do you trust your defense here? Because the last time Oklahoma had the ball, even though they didn't score, they gained three or four first downs running the football down Texas's throat. So do you trust your defense or do you onside kick it? Hmm. Think about it for a second. If you onside kick it, you've got about a 15% chance of getting it. 15 to 20%. And you give up the ball at midfield, which can possibly give them a field goal if they get about 15 yards. You only gain about 25 yards if you kick off. Most likely they're going to get it at the 25. The conventional wisdom, the conventional way that it's done with three and a half minutes left in the game, depending on the timeout situation. I didn't check out Texas's timeout situation, so that's key. If they don't have the timeouts, they need to, need to onside kick it here. But if they've got timeouts, then you kick it away and trust your defense. But Lincoln Riley's the type quarterback, Lincoln Riley's the type coach that will not be shy about throwing it if he thinks he can do something. Missouri has just defeated LSU. Think about if we would have said that a couple weeks ago before the season started, before we saw LSU lose to Mississippi State. LSU was lost to Mizzou, 45-41. The defending national champions, which most of them are off making money in the NFL, so it's just a shell of that team, but it's still, they've got the same laundry on. If we would have said that they lost to Mississippi State in Missouri, I actually thought that this would be a buffer into the season for LSU because if you looked at their schedule, they had the typically tough SEC schedule, especially with the two games added. They're going to onside kick it because I don't think they've got the timeouts. Oh, that Texas player should have tried to catch the ball, but he could barely reach it, so he tried to tip it to somebody, but tipped it out of bounds. Uh, Epps. This was a perfect kick. This is as good as you can do it. You got that second bam. Okay, he did try to catch the ball. I, I thought he tried to tip it ahead because he couldn't catch it. Oh, man. Okay, well, okay, they're still in the game, but they've got to stop Oklahoma now. They can't give up a first down because they'll probably be in field goal range. Let's see where the ball is. Oh, although he tipped it down the field. Texas is still in decent shape here. Okay, it's at the 46. So they can give up. Well, they've got no timeouts. One timeout. Looks like one. 
And my goodness, we've got LSU at the one yard line, had to throw it. They threw the ball from inside the one yard line, and now it looks like Texas almost got a turnover. Almost got a turnover. But LSU was inside the one yard line and threw, they threw that Bengals Niners Super Bowl play. I might be overstating this. I didn't watch the complete play, but it was one of those deals where the 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 out was too flat and he didn't get into the end zone. Anyway, 45-41 final. Oh my goodness. Terrace Marshall had 235 yards receiving. Miles Brennan went 29 for 48 for 430 and four touchdowns. All right. Back to second and 13 for OU. They get about four. So we got a big third down, and we'll see if Oklahoma is going to throw it and chance it or if they're going to run the clock. If there was more like 90 seconds left in the game, they should definitely run it. But with two and a half minutes, you need to try to convert. I would throw a safe pass. I would throw a ball that is about – I would throw a ball in the flat – or the type play that's like an 80-plus percentage completion play, so you don't stop the clock. But even if they tackle and wrap, then you run the clock, and then you kick. Here it goes. This is the kind of play they're going to throw. And they didn't get it. It was dropped, I believe. I don't think that was broken up. I think it was dropped. So Texas gets the, the clock to stop. Wow. That's what I Okay. Our guy Joel Clatt who is one of my more respected guys in college football says you definitely run because let's say you run the play at, uh, they ran the play about two fifteen on the clock. You run it 42nd clock. You run it, you punt, da, 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 you, you punt it about a minute 35 and then Texas takes over at their own 15 yard line. Let's say with one thirty-five left, that's what would have happened. Had they run it and punted, and this kid is a top-notch punter for Oklahoma, however you pronounce his name. Let's see what he can do here. Well, not as good a punt as uh, he's punted in the past, and uh, Texas is coming back with it. Unfortunately, they've got a bad penalty that's uh, got to be a blocking penalty. So he ran it out to the 22. That flag was probably a spot foul from about maybe the 17 they're going to be back to like the seven yard line most likely got a holding so 152 on the clock texas is going to have to go like 90 yards that's a that's a big penalty you know with a little breathing room out at the 22 23 yard line versus back inside your own tent Yeah, that, that was, oh, my goodness. Okay, here we go, regardless. Yeah, they're at their own. They're at the 16. Okay, we're going to finish this drive. I'm going to let you guys watch football. I'm going to watch football. going to have some, some burgers on the grill, maybe some dogs. We'll see. McD, this is what I was telling you. He's got no time to throw the ball. He's running for his life the entire game. Maybe Thomas. Come on now. Got to finish out the game. Got to finish out the game. Texas has some hope here. All right, so we got the first and 10 on the penalty. It's a nice little penalty they got, 10 yards. Okay, 
Ellinger is going to run. He loves to run, get out of bounds. He made the move and got out of bounds. That was sweet because he knew he couldn't get out of bounds. He made the move, made the dude miss, gets out of bounds. All right, we got uh, 94 seconds left in the game. They're at their own 44. They cannot have that one play that kills them, either a sack, uh, a play that takes forever, that's completed in bounds. They can't have that kind of play. Not at this point. Get out of bounds at the 38. Brennan Eagles. Iowa State and Texas Tech kicked off. Ellinger's got some time. Oh, he missed him. Theo. <laughs> I think they think they've got me on strings, Theo. I don't know. I, I love the Kings fans. Love all you guys. It's all fun. It's all fun. Okay. There he goes. He's going to do this every time. This guy, this guy's made a college career on stepping up in the pocket and seeing a lane and taking off and running for 12 yards. <laughs> that is the Sam Ellinger play of his life. Not running for 52 yards, 12 yards. And either uh, when you're not in a time crunch situation, laying a shoulder into a linebacker or a safety, but when he needs to get out of bounds, get out of bounds. Okay, Oklahoma takes the time out on defense. All right, we got Tennessee, Georgia coming up here very soon. Actually, they've kicked off. I was going to complete this uh, live stream by 3.30 to let you guys watch the 3.30 games where you've got pretty much a choice of two games. you got Texas Tech, Iowa State. You also have Tennessee, Georgia, I would think. Most of you will watch that game as I will. Then at 4 o'clock, we've got a number of uh, decent games lined up with Pitt, BC, and uh, Arkansas, Auburn in particular. Chad's letting us know Florida great cause. They have an elite offense. See how that setup is treating Oklahoma. Meanwhile, poor old Georgia with no offense is only beating teams on average by 24 points. Yes. Georgia's got a better roster. They've got a much better defense. Yes, people are focused on this Florida offense doing all sorts of good work going into today and forgetting about the defensive woes. That Georgia defense. We'll see if they've got the best defense in the country. I'll be shocked if they don't have one of the five best. He needs to do something while. Okay, we've got a hold. Big penalty. David, a thousand on the Notre Dame game. Giving the points, giving the 21 points. Okay. First and 20. Bam. Okay. Now they're going to kill a ton of time, but that was a big completion. There's at the 21. They need to get to the line by. Don't. I'm not clocking it here. You got to run a play. You might as well just run the play, run the play. They can run it by 40. All right, they snap it. Did they just run the ball? Okay, they got a timeout. They better take it now. 
Okay, that was an interesting call. Okay, they didn't call a timeout because they don't have any. I thought they had one. I thought that's what I saw at the bottom of the screen. Anyway. Wow, that was, that was out of the strike zone. But he wound up and gave it a go. If they can get out of bounds, they've got three plays. Oh, they threw the flag. And it should have been thrown from what I saw. We got a barn burner going. That ball was not going to get caught. Okay. Yeah, they shouldn't run the ball because they're going to end the game if they do. Still got to throw it. But Ellinger, hmm. Look at that. How many of you wrote something on social media, Navy Thomas? How many of you wrote anything on social media that said Texas sucks, Texas is dead, whatever it is? And Texas may still suck. But, uh, yeah. They got to win this to make the college football playoff for Mark Rogers TV. So let's see where this, uh, where this receiver came from and why the defense didn't pick him up. I got to see this on the replay. Got to make the kick. Can't screw that up. Okay. This is sweet. Okay. Well, they just show the end of the play. All right, I am going to say goodbye. Let's bid adieu right here. Here's the setup for tonight, folks. So if my Florida State, I should check my Twitter feed. Anyway, if my Florida State guys want to deliver post game following Notre Dame, Florida State, then they're going to be here, and I'm going to be on the Miami channel doing Clemson, Miami post after the game, Okay. If not, I'm going to be here after the Miami Clemson game and all the primetime games. So lock it in here. And if you want to see me talking about all the games, then go on over to the go over to the Miami channel if you don't see me here. Otherwise, you'll see me here. Hopefully that makes sense. I'll explain that in the uh, community page. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. It's been a great window of college football. I am so glad to be back on a college football Saturday for the first time in four weeks right here at Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football. See you soon.